Uh, my name is Sydney Stretz. I'm an undergraduate academic advisor for the College of Visual and Performing Arts. And I'm joined here with Abigail Hart, who is our arts education advising specialist. She's going to be monitoring some questions in the chat. So if you have any questions as the presentation kind of goes along or you think of anything, feel free to just message her in the chat and she will answer them for you. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So tonight we're here to just kind of run through and talk about what to expect in terms of fall, uh, the fall advising session in preparation for the spring semester. Um, the first thing that I want to reiterate to you all and make sure that we understand is that this is different from this past semester over the spring um, or when you were registered for the fall. I'm sorry, I'm going to start over. <laughs> this is different from the summer registration period when you're registered for the fall in that you were pre-registered for all your classes. Um, this time it is your responsibility to make sure that you're registered and there actually will not be a case really any time in the future where you be where you will be fully registered for a full schedule of classes. Um, there may be occasions where maybe you have one or two classes added to your schedule if you're either in a residential college or an honors college. But bottom line, the thing that's really important to remember is that from here on out, you're responsible for your registration. And if you are not yourself putting and adding classes to your schedule and registering um, this November, then you won't have any classes to take in the spring semester. So that's something that we really want to remember. Um, the first thing that I'm going to talk about in terms of advising is why we think it's advice it's important in the College of Visual and Performing Arts and why it can be really effective and useful for you. Um, so the things to remember is that advisors are really here to help you and to assist with aligning your academic, personal, and career goals. Um, the number one thing is that we want to make sure that you're taking classes and making good progress towards your chosen degree path. But we also can um, kind of talk to you about different options if you're interested in another major uh, or a minor and kind of things that will align with your own personal goals and things that you want to learn and figure out how that can best kind of fit into your degree program. Uh, we also can listen to you if you're happen to be going through any certain challenges or hiccups and reference uh, specific campus resources that might be really useful to you. We can help you choose electives or other optional courses that maybe suit your interests or goals. And then the last thing to remember too is that the way we handle advising in the College of Visual and Performing Arts is that um, you have to see us for a meeting to talk about your next semester schedule and then you receive an advising code so that you can access your registration. So I would say the most important thing here is that you need your advising code from us so you have to come see us. I try to always remind students that we're here for you so you don't necessarily have to divulge any like really discreet personal information to us but if you're going through something or have questions or concerns and want to try to just ask us about whatever, we can at least make sure that we're pointing you in the right direction to kind of solve that problem. And so remember, if you're ever in a position where you're like, I don't really know what to do about this or who to call or ask, you can always reach out to your advisor. And if we are not the right person, we can definitely connect you with who that right person is. <clears throat> um, students in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, freshmen are assigned to either myself my colleague Jennifer Rich and or Abigail. Abigail sees students that are arts education based students. So if you are a major in music education, dance education, theater education or arts education, Abigail should be your advisor. Um, you should have met with your advisor this past July before the semester started. But if you have not, or you are want to double check or are unsure who you are assigned to or advising, maybe you changed your major after you started the semester at UNCG, you can always look that up in UNC Genie. Um, it's under the student service tab and under registration, and there should be a link for lookup advisor. Uh, that will include your advisor's contact information. Um, I will say that Abigail and Jennifer and I are best reached via email. So that's what I would recommend um, if you're reaching out to us because that just is typically a bit faster and more efficient for us in terms of communication. The advising season um, kicks off next in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we will probably start doing advising in the College of Visual and Performing Arts beginning mid next week. 
Um, one thing that you really want to try to make sure that you do is that you have completed your your advising appointment with your advisor prior to when your registration window opens. I'll talk a little bit about when that time happens in a minute. Um, you will receive an email from your assigned advisor actually tomorrow with instructions on how to sign up for an appointment with us. We are using Google calendars this year, much like we have uh, hosted meetings over the summer and also advising appointments for walk-ins throughout the semester. So it shouldn't look too different than what you're used to. Um, if you have another advisor, perhaps you have another major, you have a residential college advisor or you have an honors advisor, they may use something else to schedule. I would recommend that if you have multiple advisors, you make sure you're meeting with all of them just so that you're getting all the information that you need. Um, but we use Google, so that's what you'll see from us. The registration windows for the spring semester open October 26th. However, the way that it works is that each student is assigned their own individual registration window and it is assigned based on earned credit hours. So not the credit hours that you have been registered for, but the credit hours that you have completed. Most freshmen at this point have earned zero credit hours. So that means that they actually are kind of the in the last group to register. Um, there are different circumstances that may make it so that your registration is a little bit earlier. Uh, if you are, a student athlete, or you are registered with ORS or an honor student, you may be registering a little bit earlier. And also if you have earned credit, like from a pre-college opportunity and or a transfer institution, then you may have earned credit. And so the registration windows are really determined by credit hour. So like I said, if you have zero earned credit hours, so that's no classes that you have grades recorded for, you're likely gonna register on November 11th. If you have between one and 29, you're likely gonna register on November 10th. And if you have around 30 to 44, you're gonna register on November 5th. Any more than that, um, if you're uh, new to UNCG this semester, you maybe are registering a little bit earlier, but it is also likely that you probably are not advising with us because we really only see um, new first year students. Um, just to talk a little bit about scheduling an appointment with us, like I said, we will contact you when it's time to start scheduling appointments. You are going to receive that email tomorrow afternoon. I recommend reading it carefully um, and going ahead and requesting your appointment. Like I said, we use Google Calendar, so it looks very similar to this box up here. It'll give you an example of what the meeting is for. Um, these are happening over Zoom, so there'll be virtual meetings just like this presentation. And you can pick a time that's convenient for you. If you have specific questions that you would like to ask us beforehand, just to kind of give us a heads up, then you can keep, include those in the description as well. Uh, like I said previously, some other advisors use Starfish, which this is what it looks like on the bottom if you have an advisor in another area. But just to make it clear, we are using Google. We are not using Starfish for CVPA advising. The email that you receive tomorrow will include a direct link to your advisor's calendar, so it should be pretty seamless And that if you read through the email review, there are some to do steps in there that we want to make sure that you review and then click on the link. It should take you directly to your advisor's Google Calendar and make it really easy to schedule an appointment. The advising appointments are first come first serve. So if you are somebody that maybe has priority registration or knows you're going to register a little earlier. Um, it's important that you make sure that you're scheduling your appointment. We all have pretty, a pretty good number of advisees to see in a short amount of time. So if you kind of dilly dally and or make uh, a point to kind of ignore the advising appointment emails, then you're going to get yourself into a position where maybe you are not having a meeting in time to register and we really don't want that. So make sure that you are making a priority. And then the last thing we ask in regards to scheduling is to please just be mindful of your own schedule as well as ours and really commit to your scheduled time. Uh, we understand that things come up and you may need to cancel, but if you could just please give us as much notice as possible, just because we do have a lot of students to see and it's really likely that another student probably could use the time slot that you maybe had scheduled. Um, it's also, it's hard for us to kind of make up the time if you don't show up to your appointment or kind of don't give us any notice unless it's right before the meeting. So if you're picking a time, make sure that you check your calendar and yet you're available, you don't have any conflicts and that you can 
meet with us so we can talk about your plans. Um, the next thing I think is nice to talk about is kind of to explain to you um, what we expect from you in terms of the advising meeting and what things you should look into preparing. So the first thing I would ask is for you to really think about things that you may need to communicate to your advisor ahead of time. The number one example that I think in terms of this um, is perhaps whether or not you're thinking about a uh, major change. We only advise for majors within the College of Visual and Performing Arts. So if you have decided or are thinking about changing your major to something outside the college, like for example, something in the College of Arts and Sciences or the Bryan Business School, you actually will need to coordinate with an advisor over in one of those places. And so it would be really useful for us to know that before you schedule an advising appointment, just because it's really not gonna be a very efficient use of both of our time. We're not gonna be able to give you the answers that you need. Um, and are going to have to probably refer you to somebody else. So it's nice to kind of just remove that middle um, ground and make sure that you are meeting with whoever you need to as quickly and efficiently as possible. I would say anything else related to this is kind of related to efficiency and that like make sure that you're doing putting in a little effort kind of exploring course options um, and making sure that you organize questions for us so that we can really make sure that your appointment as a is a as efficient and effective as possible and you're getting all out of out getting as much out of it as you really can um over the summer you were invited to a canvas organization that we created called the cvpa advising org it includes a lot of really lovely instructional videos and details that we would ask that you kind of review in here just so that you can familiarize your, yourself with this process again. We realize that it's very likely that there are some students that maybe didn't touch their registration over the summer, or even if they made short changes, they may not recall what that process looks like. And luckily there is a resource for you that reviews all these things. Um, it out also outlines the general education requirements for the College of Visual and Performing Arts. So if you need to review those and looking at like options for courses in the fall or in the spring, excuse me, you can review that module. Um, it talks about how to use UNC Genie, how to use DegreeWorks, which I will talk about in just a second, and also how to search for available classes within the class schedule, which is kind of the number one thing we're doing is looking for uh, course options and what's going to fit and work together with our schedule. And then finally, it also talks about the registration process, which you can review if you're feeling a little anxious about approaching that this coming semester. DegreeWorks is a digital audit tool. Essentially, I like to talk, refer to it as like a digital checklist of all of the courses that you need to complete in order to graduate with your selected major. Um, or also like minor concentration, et cetera. So this exists in your UNC Genie account. I think we probably have discussed this before, but it's been a while. So I would also suggest that you spend some time just reviewing this and making sure that you're familiar with it. Um, you can find this under the student tab under student record, records in UNC Genie. And it's really helpful to kind of outline and see what classes you are already taken, what classes you probably need to take in the future and gives you an opportunity to explore options and think about kind of parameters for course options. The other thing that I will remind you of as well is that when we sent you your schedule in the summer in July, not only did it include the courses that you were enrolled in for this semester, but it included a forecast of classes that you probably are likely to take this spring. And so that's another thing that's really good to go check out and dig through your email. It probably came from your assigned advisor on July 1st and take a look at that spring semester forecast because that also is going to give you a great outline for what kinds of classes you probably need to take next semester. And then the last thing that we ask you to do is just to go through and browse available courses. I think the main ones that we probably want to think about are general education courses. As you know, CVPA students really take a couple gen ed classes each semester on top of a majority of major classes. Um, most of the major classes we can kind of cover for you um, and talk about options because they're pretty prescriptive, but the general education classes, there's so many options and so much variety that it's really helpful for us if you've at least taken a look and maybe kind of created a list of classes that you think that you might be interested in taking um, or for example, classes that you know definitely don't sound interesting to you, that also helps whittle down the list. 
but it does take a really long time and appointment to kind of thumb through and go through each category and read each class offering. So if you've already done that, that's gonna save us both some time. The last thing that we ask you to do just to prepare for your advising appointment is to prepare any necessary questions that you may have with your advisor. Um, they can be in reference to things happening this semester that we maybe need to think about in terms of planning for the spring. They also can revolve around like course options. Maybe you're not so sure about a specific course or need more explanation of what's going on with it. Um, and we can provide that for you. So just kind of jot down a list of questions. That way we can make sure that you are leaving the appointment with, with everything answered and also ready to register whenever your registration window is open. This is an example of um, the advising record that we use during our advising appointments. And so I think this just kind of helps outline what you can expect from the meeting with us. So at the top, you'll see it has like your personal information. It will also include your advising code. Your advising code changes every semester. So you received an advising code for the fall semester, but it will be different for the spring. So you definitely need to meet with us to get that and it will be provided to you on this form. Um, it can include any notes, like maybe if we chatted about some things or you had some questions, we can include like links to resources or websites up in these notes so you can just go back and refer to them. And then a list of course recommendations that we suggest that you think about and or really consider taking in the spring. And then also alternative recommendations in the case that when you go to register those things fill up or are no longer available or conflict with the schedule that you're trying to put together. So you should be really well equipped to register for classes after you meet with us and get this um, advising record. The last thing that we'll kind of talk about is just things that your advisor can assist with that maybe kind of exists with outside of um, preparing for registration. So other things that we can review are just academic policies and procedures if there are certain things that you have questions about or need um, a refresher on. Study abroad is currently pretty up in the air right now, but we definitely can connect you with the international programs uh, office and talk to you about study abroad, or at least kind of decide maybe the ideal semester for study abroad, if that's something that you're thinking about. This really isn't specific to advising appointments for this spring, but something that maybe we could do after November is future semester planning. So we are available to do graduate plans and or future semester planning for you. Um, do know that the appointments that we're talking about now are really kind of specific to this peak advising time because we're just trying to get everybody ready to register. That is an option. We can talk to you about current challenges that you're facing and things that maybe can change or we can work on to wrap up the semester or better, better prepare you for the spring semester. Like I said, we can talk to you about major changes, um, major additions and or minor additions. Um, if you have specific restrictions in your schedule, um, maybe you have um, a job that you need flexibility around, or you're caring for uh, family members at home, we can talk about that and work with you to try to get you a schedule that works for you. We can investigate personal interests if you have specific interests that maybe aren't being covered in your coursework and kind of talk about how to uh, fill that gap. We can refer you to individual student su support offices. We can talk to you about things that are causing stress or anxiety. But also most importantly, I think the thing to remember is that we are really familiar with the CVPA curriculum within all the majors. And so we could just act as a second pair of eyes. If you come to us with a fully planned schedule next semester, we love it, that's great. Um, but we can make sure and double check that everything you've picked out and are planning on is gonna work in the way that you're thinking it will, uh, just to make sure that you are not um, in a position where you're gonna waste any time or money because we definitely don't want that. I think that is about it here. Um, the last kind of thing I wanna talk about is just like general things that are expected of you in terms of interpersonal kind of relationships with us. So we just ask that you be prepared for your appointment by doing those things that we talked about, reviewing um, the modules in Canvas, reviewing degree works, the course schedule and preparing questions. That you're professional and respectful uh, we don't really like when people are mean to us. I'm sure that you don't either. <laughs> so just remember, even if you're stressed out or you're in some kind of position that you feel like you need immediate attention or an answer, like we are happy to help you, but we do serve a handful of other students. And so please just try to be professional and respectful of our time. We promise that we are trying to help you, um, but maybe just need 
a little bit more from you. We also ask that you're honest and open. Um, if you are not open, like honest about things that are happening this semester, for example, if we plan to take an upper level class in the spring, but you know that you're maybe not gonna pass it this semester, that's something that's kind of helpful for us to know. Um, we are definitely not gonna come with a position of any form of judgment, but just ask that you just kind of tell us what's going on if you feel comfortable so that we can really try to help you as effectively as possible. And then we also just ask that you're flexible, um, both with our availability, but also with course availability, because things can get filled really quickly um, and they can maybe not go exactly as you expect. So it's often good to make like a plan B or C um, and understand that, you know, things might change. I've asked all my students I know in uh, regards to this semester to just come in with to the semester with as much uh, flexibility and kind of loose expectations as possible. And I think that's probably something that is still gonna be true in the spring. So um, if you have any questions about kind of what we reviewed, feel free to ask Abigail in the chat and then she can ask me publicly if we feel like it's necessary. We have a few more minutes left here. Sydney, since we have time, we have a question in the chat box that I was going to answer by typing, but you can answer it right now. So um, the question was asked, if we were to want a minor, would we start taking classes next semester or next year? Yeah, so that's a good question. I would say it really depends on kind of how it fits with your current classes and what the availability is like and also what the minor is. Um, the first piece there is that we tend to kind of prioritize classes in a specific way and that the priority first would be your major courses and that we want to make sure that you're enrolled in the courses that you need to progress in your program on time. And so there's a certain number of courses, depending on your major, that are specific to that. Um, and then we probably, like your semester looks, this semester want to add in some kind of general education class or could look into adding a course for a minor. Um, there are some caveats to that. Some minors like have restrictions, like if you're thinking about a language minor, some language courses don't start in the spring. So then it would probably depend on like what courses are available for that specific minor. Okay, we have another question also about um, majors or minors outside of CVPA. So um, the question was asked, you mentioned that if we are curious about a major or minor outside of CVPA, we should contact the school it's associated with. Could you elaborate on this? Sure, I would be happy to. So like I said, Jennifer and Abigail and I only advise for students in the College of Visual and Performing Arts. And so those are majors in the School of Art, School of Theater, School of Dance, School of Music, and also under Arts Administration. Each college and or unit has their own advising staff, which is kind of why this night was scheduled where you have breakout rooms because they're breaking out with individual advising staff and they handle advising differently in each unit. So we wanna make sure that you're connected with an advisor that not only is an, uh, like a specialist in that area so that they understand and can tell you what is best for you in terms of like course progress and curriculum, but also making sure that you are fulfilling requirements for that specific major because it probably differs from ours. Um, my suggestion to you would be to just email your advisor maybe tomorrow or Friday and let them know that maybe you're considering a major outside of the College of Visual and Performing Arts if that is the case and let them know what it is and see if that's something they need if they need to connect you with somebody else elsewhere so we can kind of get that process started before the advising season kicks off. Um, if you're considering a minor outside of the college, that's not such a big deal. We can help you with that for sure. That happens very frequently. Uh, and also if you are considering a dual major, a double major of some sort, then that's something that we also, you probably would just be advised to or assigned two advisors. So you would have one of us as your advisor and then another advisor that you would need to meet with as well. Does that answer your question? Understood. <laughs> Great. Does anyone else have any last minute questions? We have about four minutes left. In the meantime, I'm just going to put up our contact information. Give me one second here. So if you're an arts education student, 
Again, those are majors in arts education, music education, dance education, theater education. And you are assigned to Abigail. If you're not in one of those majors, but and your last name is starts with an A through an M, you are assigned to me. And then if you are not an arts major with last names N through Z, you are assigned to Jennifer. So here is our contact information for you. Um, like I said, email is the best way to contact us. So that's really what I would suggest. We're all also working remotely at this time. So we are not in our offices. So if you go there, we will not be there, um, which is why, again, email is pretty much the easiest and most efficient way to catch us. Any other last questions? If you think of anything or you leave the presentation, you're like, oh, darn, I should have asked this question. Feel free to just email your advisor. They're happy to answer it for you. Um, or if you think it's a question that maybe you can wait till your advising appointment, you are welcome to ask them there. Like I said, you will get an email tomorrow um, with instructions on how to sign up for that. And it will include this information, kind of a brief run through again about how to access those are the resources that we're talking about so that you can spend some time over the weekend to kind of poke through and prepare. All right, great. I think maybe because no one has any other questions, we'll let you go like two minutes early. Uh, I hope you all enjoy your evening. And like I said, we look forward to meeting with you and talking to you about your future plans here in the next few weeks. Have a good evening.